Another comedian is under fire for vulgar remarks she made. We'll talk extensively about what Samantha Bee said very shortly, because everyone from the president on down is talking about it. First, though, Roseanne Barr, the sequel, a day after the president tweeted about her racist tweet, without mentioning the racism in her racist tweet, the president tweeted again on the subject. And keep it honest, if you're waiting for him to speak out against the racism of comparing an African-American woman to an ape, you might be waiting just a bit longer. Yesterday, remember, his reaction was to ask why ABC, the network that canceled her show, wasn't apologizing to him for a variety of perceived offenses. Today, the president tweeted Iger, referring to CEO Bob Iger, where is my call of apology? You and ABC have offended millions of people, and they demand a response. How is Brian Ross doing? He tanked the market with an ABC lie, yet no apology. Double standard. Brian Ross is the ABC News correspondent responsible for an erroneous report about the president. The network offered several clarifications, suspended Ross, so the president restated his apology demand. He tweeted about what he called the corrupt media, Korea. He tweeted the words fair trade in all caps. What he did not do was mention the racism at the heart of Roseanne Barr's tweet. And keep in mind, us, whether it's because he doesn't feel it's necessary or appropriate or to appeal to elements of his base or for some other reason, it is part of a pattern. The president, when faced with a racially charged issue or situation, does not initially confront the racism in it. This is what he was faced with in Charlottesville, Virginia, one night last summer during a weekend that would end with one woman dead. Jews will not replace us! Jews will not replace us! People marching through the streets in Charlottesville chanting, Jews will not replace us, and chanting blood and soil and other Nazi slogans. Here was how the president saw it. You had some very bad people in that group, but you also had people that were very fine people on both sides. Fine people on both sides, which is a rather broad-minded interpretation, which is not true. That's certainly not in the video you saw, which was the demonstration from Friday night. Not according to a journalist who was there in the crowd, who told us point blank that what you saw there was exactly what it looked like. Neo-Nazis, other white supremacists, marching, spewing hate. The White House initially defended the president's remarks, but later the president gave a more full-throated statement, saying in part, racism is evil, and those who cause violence in its name are criminals and thugs, including the KKK, neo-Nazis, white supremacists, and other hate groups that are repugnant to everything we hold dear as Americans. What's interesting, though, was that this was not the president's first instinct, which was to avoid a full-throated condemnation of what seemed plain to see. Something similar played out on the campaign trail when candidate Trump was asked about racist remarks by David Duke, a figure citizen Trump had been commenting on and even disavowing since 1991. I want to ask you about the Anti-Defamation League, which this week called on you to publicly condemn unequivocally the racism of former KKK Grand Wizard David Duke, who recently said that voting against you at this point would be treason to your heritage. Will you unequivocally condemn David Duke and say that you don't want his vote or that of other white supremacists in this election? Well, just so you understand, I don't know anything about David Duke, okay? I don't know anything about what you're even talking about with uh, white supremacy or white supremacists. So, I don't know. I mean, I don't know, did, did he endorse me or what's going on? Because, you know, I know nothing about David Duke. I know nothing about white supremacists. And so, you're asking me a question that I'm supposed to be talking about people that I know nothing about. Well, that was February 28th of 2016. The next day, he claimed he disavowed David Duke in that interview, which he did not. The day after that, he explicitly disavowed what David Duke said, leaving some to praise him for getting there and others to condemn him for getting there late. Just a short time ago, Roseanne Barr tweeted again, and once again, it's inflammatory, talking to ABC executive Ben Sherwood about Valerie Jarrett, the African woman, the African American woman she compared to an ape. She tweets, he said, what were you thinking when you did this? I said, I thought she was white. She looks like my family. He scoffed and said, what you have done is egregious and unforgivable. I beg for my crew's jobs. Will I ever recover from this pain? OMG.